Hi everybody, welcome back. Glad you could tune in again. Well, I've got something a little different for you today. Uh, this is something that has sprung out to me in my preparation for this coming Saturday's conference. You'll remember that um, the conference uh, on Saturday uh, is entitled Run the Race, and Pastor Neil and I are going to be speaking from Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 11. Pastor Neil has got the first couple of verses which contains the phrase run the race. In verse 1 it says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I'll let Pastor Neil speak about that. I'm going to be speaking about uh, Hebrews 12 verses 3 to 11 which develops that theme and it's the development of that theme that I want to share something with you about right now. So what's going on here? Well if you look at Hebrews 12 2, not what's on the screen at the moment, uh, Hebrews 12 2 uh, the author urges us to look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. So as we're running the race that is set before us, our eyes are to be fixed on Christ, Jesus, the one uh, whom we follow, the founder and perfecter of our faith. And it's that theme that's then picked up in verses 3 and 4. And this is what I wanted to share with you. Notice what we are to consider about this Jesus whom we're following and looking to. We are to consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself. What is it about Jesus that we're to reflect on? The fact that so many people were hostile to him. Sinners opposed him right from the beginning of his ministry. That's what we're to consider about Christ. But then something very strange happens. That exhortation to consider the way that Jesus was opposed by sinful men is applied to us more directly in verse 4, or certainly to the initial readers and then indirectly to us. And you might have expected the author to say something like, therefore as you struggle against the hostility of sinful men in the world around you, and so on and so forth, follow the example of Christ. You might especially expect that in view of the fact that we know from the contents of the book of Hebrews that the original recipients had experienced a great deal of suffering and persecution and threats of persecution from the world around them. So you might expect it to say something like, Consider Jesus who endured from sinners such hostility against himself. In your struggle against the hostility of the sinful world, and so on and so forth. But that's not what it says. You notice what it says in verse 4, where Christ's suffering hostility from the sinful world around him is paralleled with our struggle against the sin that is within us. Now, isn't that remarkable? It's as though the greatest enemy, once again, is not the world around, it's the sin within. And the reason for highlighting this here is that I wanted to show you another text in the book of Hebrews where a similar correspondence is found. And it's easier for me to show you this on video because uh, there is a chiastic pattern, and you all know what a chiasm is by now. It's a pattern, that, a literary structure that has this kind of arrangement A, B, C, D, C, B, A, or A, B, B, A, or something like that. In this case, uh, as ever, the beginning section corresponds with the ending section, the second to, with the second to last, and so on. You can see the colours highlight that, I hope, fairly clearly. This chiasm in Hebrews chapter 5 shows the same correspondence. So I just wanted to share it with you uh, for your consideration, because I think it might encourage uh, and perhaps be somewhat sobering to us. So let's just uh, see how this chiasm is uh, evident first. In verse 1, the red text up here, uh, the author speaks about the high priests of Israel being chosen from among men. In the last section, he speaks also of another high priest being chosen, or designated by God, but this high priest, of course, is the high priest Jesus, after the order of Melchizedek, a different order of priesthood. Maybe we'll talk about that another time. So verse 1 and verse 10, the red portions at the beginning and the end, were about the appointment of the high priests, whether Israelite or Christ. In blue, we have a discussion of what the high priests offer. Uh, notice the same verb is used here a couple of times, prospero, prospero. The high priests of Israel offer, prospero, gifts and sacrifices for sins. They, off they offer sacrifice for their own sins and for those of the people. 
in verse 7 Jesus also offered Prospero something else prayers and supplications come back to that in a second but you can clearly see these sections correspond they're both about offering and then finally in the center verse 4 is parallel with verses 5 and 6 verse 4 explains that the Israelite high priests didn't take this honor upon themselves but only when they were called by God and so also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest but was appointed by God so you can see those the sections are pretty parallel so the chiasm is fairly obvious right so you've seen the the structure and it's all kind of pretty and elegant and multicolored now but what does it show us about the correspondence between the priesthood of Israel's priests and the priesthood of Christ we'll notice again here in verse 7 what did Jesus offer well he offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries of course and tears uh, obviously arising from the suffering he endured at the hands of sinful men notice the um, reference to being saved from death and so on and what he suffered Jesus didn't suffer because of his own sins but because of other people's he learned obedience through that suffering not that he was ever disobedient but he came to maturity as a man as he suffered more and more at the hands of sinful and wicked men so what's going to be the corresponding thing that the high priests of Israel are going to offer up in relation to sins it's not offer up prayers because they're suffering because of the sins of others again they offer up gift and sacrifices for their own sins again explicitly here because of this he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins just as he does for those of the people so what's going on here in the book of Hebrews a very significant principle of biblical theology and actually of pastoral practical theology is here being highlighted Jesus suffering at the hands of sinful men is principally an example to us according to the book of Hebrews not because it shows us how to handle the hostility of other sinful men but rather because it shows us how to handle the sinfulness of our own hearts we've noticed before in the book of James that the greatest enemy of the church is within not outside in the world but within here we have it again the same principle in a different form in the book of Hebrews the endurance of Christ in facing up to the wickedness and the evil of Pontius Pilate and the leaders of the Jews and the Sadducees and the scribes and all those who betrayed him and all those who uh, talked ill about him and all those who conspired against him all of Jesus endurance and steadfastness in fighting against that wickedness out there is to be an example to us of fighting against this wickedness in here within us and it's about that that we will hear more on Saturday that'll be for now I think the Lord bless you and see you soon bye for now <laughs>